Hello everyone, welcome back to FECAM's UNTH Histology Slide Series. I am Akela Busayo, a 611 medical student, and I will be taking you guys today on the slides of connective tissues. This video is actually brought to you by the Academic Board of FECAM's UNTH. We are going to start with the slide of the adipose tissue. The adipose tissue is a tissue that is made up of adipocytes or known as fat cells. Now these fat cells is just like a normal cell like having a cytoplasm and then the nucleus. But in this case, it has additional feature which is possession of a large lipid droplet. Just as we know the function of adipose tissue is to store fats. These fats are stored in these adipocytes as this large lipid droplet. Now, one thing to note is that the large lipid droplet tend to distend and then occupy most of the cytoplasm. So it compresses and then displaces the nucleus to one side of the cell, and the cytoplasm is reduced to a small ring around the periphery. Let me illustrate what I'm trying to say with a diagram. This is a normal cell with the nucleus and then the cytoplasm. Then this is our adipose cell with the cytoplasm, the, the nucleus displaced peripherally. Now, um, we can see this layer like this, there's a rim. This rim is actually occupied by the cytoplasm. And then the main part of the cell is now occupied by the lipid droplet. Now, during histology technique for preparation of slide, some of the process involve dissolving the tissue in organic solvents such as xylene, alcohol. So thereby, because of the fact that adipose, this adipose tissue, I mean, it has large lipid droplets. So this droplet dissolves in this organic solvent in such a way that it now leaves the empty space that we can see in our slide. So these empty spaces we are seeing are actually are actually occupied on the normal by lipid droplet but because of the fact that it has gone through um, processing techniques so it now have this empty space so it's not just an empty space it was actually occupied by the lipid droplet so as you can see in the slide you can see the cytoplasm if you trace it out you can see the peripheral rim of cytoplasm and then you see our nucleus displaced to one side displaced to one side so on the normal, we can see that just like the diamond ring or just like a ring, it this part forms the part of the ring and then the nucleus forms like the diamond. So this is what brought up the name, another name that they call adipose cells. They call them the signet ring cells because if you see here, it looks like this is a ring and then the diamond of the ring. Now, to identify the adipose tissue, we can see that the cells appear circular like a ring and then the nucleus relegated to one periphery. So traditionally, on a normal, if you see a slide of the adipose tissue, we can see that it looks like an intact regular football net that is not torn at all. Like this is one of the O's of the football net, this is another O. So on a normal, some of the slides, um, they might have a uniform size of a uniform size of cell that we are going to see. I think in the next slide, we are going to see that they have some of the tissues have uniform size of cells. Now this is a slide that also shows the adipose tissue. But this time we can see that it takes up the appearance of that regular football net that we are trying to see. That means regular soccer net that we are trying to see. And then here we can also see that we can map out the ring structure. The ring structure. But one thing is that we can't really see the nucleus of these cells that are displaced to one side peripherally because of the fact that we have a lower magnification. This also shows a slide of the adipose tissue. As you can see, it even gives us a diagram to give a, a better illustration and explanation on what we are trying to see. So you can see the signet ring, signet spelled S-I-G-N-E-T. Now the nucleus, then 
the cytoplasm that is relegated to the rim and then the lipid lobe. So you can see that it looks empty. Yes, it's empty in the slide actually, but it represents the lipid lobe. So we can see that how the nucleus are being relegated to one side peripherally. Now, now where uh, can we find adipose tissue? Adipose tissues are mainly found in the mammary gland. I mean, it's actually also one of the features, prominent features of um, omentum and then also the rectal peritoneum. Now, we are to uh, if you are asked about the reasons for identification of um, of the adipose tissue, you tell them that because of the presence of a signet ring cell. You can even add more by telling them um, presence of if we are asked for more presence of fat droplets in the cells, presence of a peripheral rim of cytoplasm is also a reason for identification, and then presence of a peripherally displaced nucleus is also a good reason for identification. This is also another slide showing the adipose tissue, but this time it is showing the adipose tissue interspersed by some other connective tissues. So we can see that here we have connective tissues. Now, but we can, when we see this slide, we look through, we see that we have some pack of cells that looks like a net, a football net here. I mean, circular, regularly circular. Can see it here also. Yeah, I can also see some here. So this kind of give away. Okay, that this we are dealing with adipose tissue. This is the slide of the loose areolar connective tissue. Now let's talk about connective tissue in brief. Connective tissues are actually made up of extracellular matrix and the support cells. Also, I mean most of these support cells are actually fibroblasts. Now the extracellular matrix is a combined mix. Of fibers such as collagen and then the ground substance. Now the fibers in the extracellular matrix are actually seen as the pink stained materials you can see here. These pink stained materials represents the fibers. While the ground substance are the unstained parts that are seen as the pale spaces between the pink stained fibers. Now the cells of the Connective tissues, I mean, they are mainly identified by their nuclei, as we can see here, they are mainly identified by their nuclei. And these cells are, as I said, they are mainly fibroblasts. And fibroblasts are spindle-shaped cells. So their nucleus appears to be elongated, as all we can see here, all we can see here, all we can see around our, our side. Now, what's characteristic of this loose areolar connective tissue? The components of these tissues are actually scattered with no definite orientation. You can see in this slide, part of the fibers are going this way, some are even coming this way. So it is just scattered, including both the cells and then the extracellular matrix are scattered with no distinct orientation. This is also another slide of the loose areolar connective tissue, but this time with a low magnification. Now we can also identify our nucleus. You can see our nucleus scattered around, if not evenly around the slide. Now we can also map out our fibers, which are stained pink. I mean, we said that most of the fibers are collagen, but we can also find some elastin fibers, which are stained pink here. Then we can also see the inter the space between them, which is pale which represents the grand substance of the connective tissue. So this character, what characterizes our loose area connective tissue, I said earlier, is this scattered arrangement, not having a very definite orientation. This is also a slide of the loose area connective tissue, but this time in a much more lower magnification. Now we can see that the fibers are the pink, structures that are running apart that crisscrossing around the slide now if you look deep you will see that we have pale stained structures i mean spaces that we can see here this represents the grand substance of loose areolar connective tissue now we can see that inside we can see some dark stained particles which i mean they look a bit elongated these are the nucleus of the fibroblast of this particular loose areolar connective tissue now, this other large nucleus we are seeing represents 
mainly leukocytic cells. Now, where can this loose areolar connective tissue be formed? They are actually scattered throughout the body, making most of the subcutaneous tissue, the mammary gland, the omentum, and also other structures in the body. They are really, really scattered around the body. This shows the slide of the dense regular connective tissue. Just like other connective tissue, it's made up of the extracellular matrix and then the support cells, mainly the fibroblasts. Now, but this time, in this particular type of connective tissue, the fiber content makes up a large percentage of the extracellular matrix, leaving just a little percentage for the grand substance. Just as you can see, we can see that we have good, a large number of space that takes up the pink stain why just a very few space takes up the pale stain characteristic of the grand substance also the cells in the extracellular matrix are regularly arranged as you can see here now the fibers are arranged in like a parallel manner like parallel and wavy pattern just like you can see here you can see that it is part the, the fibers are parallel and then look wavy while the cells are arranged also in this regular pattern within the extracellular matrix so it has a very good orientation like it knows that it has a direction it has where it's going unlike what we saw in the loose areolar connective tissue this is also a slide of the dense tubular connective tissue but this time at the lower magnification we can see the fibers running in a wavy and then parallel pattern and then we can see the cells also in i mean they are immersed inside the electrocellular matrix but this time in a very regular and then parallel pattern also so where can we actually find this dense regular connective tissues they are mainly found in the tendons and ligaments that's the two main structures where you can really find this type of connective tissue this is a slide showing reticulin fibers Reticulin fibers are actually identified as a network of branching fibers spreading through the parenchyma of their resident tissue. They usually appear in form of nets. As you can see here, these dark fibers appear in form of incomplete nets, as you can see, scattered around the parenchyma of their resident tissues. They, are, they don't take up H and E stains, so they, are, they have their own special stain, and then they are stained with silver. And then when they are stained with silver, they appear black, or what we are seeing here. So they appear black with silver stain, just like what we are seeing on the slide. This is also another slide of the reticulin fiber. And then we can see how the net like appearance of the fibers are much more prominent. So now the reticulin fibers are mainly found in cellular organs, such as liver, the lymph node, the endocrine glands. This is a slide also showing the reticulin fiber, but this time a very much low magnification. So here, one thing about this is we can pinpoint the dark appearance of fibers running through this, the, this slide, but the net-like appearance, we can't really map it out because of this very low magnification. But one thing is that when we see a black structure like this, having this net like having this scattered appearance one thing we should think of is the presence of reticulin fibers in such tissue this slide shows the presence of elastin fibers which stains black this is to show you that not only reticulin fiber stays black but also elastin fiber but this time it's a different stain and the stain here is a van gsn stain gsn spelled g-i-e-s-o-n or simply put just elastin stain now, what characterizes this fiber is actually the presence of the wavy parallel appearance of the fiber. Like we can see here, the fiber has the wavy parallel appearance going from up below. So it's this dark, even though they are tightly packed together, but we can pinpoint the wavy parallel pattern of these fibers going downwards. So, however, we can have some other slides that are actually stained with H and E because elastin fibers takes up H and E stain and then with H and E they stain, they stain pink. So these fibers can stain pink but one thing that you always see is this parallel tightly packed parallel wavy 
pattern of these fibers. So these fibers are mainly found in the tunical media of great vessels such as the aorta, the vena cava, and then the pulmonary trunk. So we have come to the end of today's episode. If you have any question or contribution, do well to put them in the comment section below. If this video helped you a little, you can click the like button. If it if it helped more more than a little, or you want to be notified for the next when the next episode is being uploaded, please help us, help us to click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.